<laughs> okay. Well, I might uh, have to take that down. That's a bit annoying. This is Albert part two, mark two. Here's a spider plant. Hello, welcome to my little corner of the internet. Or if you're not new here, welcome back. I'm Becky, I make videos about, apparently now, pandemics, vintage fashion, books, disability, and anything else I fancy or you would like to see. So it's, it's just a bit of a mishmash, but uh, thank you for coming back if you have returned. I've never done a favourites video before, but I'm doing one now. And that's because I've got a little bit of an update to give you as well, which I never thought I'd say in the middle of a pandemic, but this is, this is the situation we find ourselves in. So I'm going to start with, I've got a few things I'd like to share with you, mostly book related actually, books, podcasts, TV shows, the odd website, places, then I'm going to tell you some things. So, start off with books. It's been Pride Month, it's now Disability Pride Month, and we've had the massive kind of uptake of the Black Lives Matter movement. I've got books that encompass two of those things. Two things I read last month were If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. I, to my shame, had never read anything by James Baldwin before. I now really want to read Giovanni's Room, but I read If Beale Street Could Talk. And it, without giving anything away, is about a young black couple uh, in New York. One of them ends up in prison. And it's not just a story about justice or the lack thereof, but about love and family and race and oh it's so beautifully written and it's not very long. I ordered it from a second hand bookshop and I, it, it fit through the letterbox. I think it's only about 170 pages. It's also been made into a film. It's stunning. It made me cry. And um, oh I didn't know this but James Baldwin actually left the United States and spent many years in France. He moved to escape the racism and homophobia in the United States and died in saint paul de vence in 1987. And it horrifies me that this is still the story for so many people. And I think it's wonderful not only to read things like why I'm no longer talking to white people about race and white fragility, I think it's really important to educate yourself but also just Immersing yourself in other people's experiences and fiction is a really great way to do that. I think it builds empathy, I think it builds understanding and the way that Baldwin, de Baldwin deals with these themes is both accessible and absolutely heart-wrenching. I, I couldn't recommend this highly enough. Second up was my kind of Pride Month read. I really wanted to read this um, and it also turned out to be a little bit you know, racism education and a bit feminist as well and I was not expecting that from a YA novel but this delivers on all of those fronts. So it is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. It's a Stonewall Honour book given by the American Library Association. It is set in the late 1700s, early 1800s, oh, 17, 1700s and it is about a young man with a quite oppressive family who is going off on his tour of Europe with his friend Percy who you don't realise at first but it becomes apparent that he's he's mixed race and it's not it's not made a big deal of in the first bit of the book because it's just him and Henry and then as they start to interact with other people you realise oh he's not white and um, it's also about Henry's sister also is a little bit she's not typical of her time for a woman either and it's just fantastic it deals with issues of gender and sexuality. Henry Montagu is bisexual. I think so is Percy. I also have been really into historic costuming recently and so this just, oh it was wonderful. It's an adventure, it's a mystery. The, the kind of things it deals with are amazing. I mean someone's described it as Austin, Oscar Wilde and Indiana Jones converge in this deliciously anachronistic bonbon. Weird way to describe it but I just, I loved it, it had everything in it, slow burn romance, hold me, I mean honestly I, I loved it, I loved it, and it is a YA book but it's quite a lot of sex in it, not sex but almost sex, yeah just would really recommend this. If you want a bit of escapism and a bit of fun but also a like heart wrenching slow burn 
gay. Oh, it's so good. I love this book. Podcasts I have been loving You'll Do. It is by Sarah Keyworth and Catherine Bohart. Catherine Bohart and Sarah Keyworth. They are comedians separately and a couple together and they interview other couples about why they love each other essentially and most recently they did one with Joe Lycett who is single and it was about loving yourself as well and it's just, it's frank, it's honest, it's hilarious things that they say about each other are very enlightening and I think in a time when people's relationships are a little bit under strain it's a really useful thing to listen to. Film wise, I loved the Eurovision Fire Saga film. I'm not even ashamed to say it, I loved it, it captures the spirit of Eurovision so beautifully and because we didn't get to celebrate it this year. On a completely different note, I watched 13th, which is about 13th Amendment of the US Constitution and it charts the history of bas basically slavery going from abolition of blatant ownership of black bodies to legalised slavery in the prison system which disproportionately affects black people and all the all of the stuff in between that led us to where we are now. I don't know that much about American history, I've been learning a lot recently and it shocked me to my core. It made me angry, it made me cry, you need to watch it if you haven't watched it. It's a it's a great documentary. Something that is not a documentary and is actually uh, wildly inaccurate in a lot of ways but just so much fun and again a beautiful piece of art that we have been blessed with via the medium of Disney is Hamilton. I had not seen it, I'd listened to the soundtrack but not all of the songs because I didn't want to kind of spoil it and I finally got to see it last week. I have had the soundtrack on repeat the women in that show, oh my god, and also how it's the one musical where I don't think I could learn all the words because it being mostly rap, that it's just constant, 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 the rhythm, the flow of it. I shared it with Alex and he really enjoyed it and he's not one for musicals but I think just the style of the music, he actually really loved Angelica's like theme and Satisfied was his favourite song which surprised me. I have to admit I like Eliza's ones but that's just because I like singing and it suits my voice a little bit better. I am not a rapper. My attempt at singing the Skyler Sisters is embarrassing and never needs to see the light of day. I would seriously recommend, if you live in the UK, visiting Batsford Arboretum. Now this makes me sound like a little old lady but it is an amazing park, an ex-stately home garden that focuses on conservation of trees from around the world and if you've got hay fever take your antihistamine before you go. The staff there were lovely, it was all really safe and they had a good one-way system in and out of the just like building they have there but it, the rest of it was all outdoors and the views across the Cotswolds are amazing. It's the only really place I've been for a day out. We took a picnic but it was so lovely and like the landscaping is beautiful. I think lockdown has really given me an appreciation of gardening in a way I've never had it before and getting to see what 203 years of growth looks like it was oh it was just wonderful. I think that's it for favourites I just wanted to update you on a couple of things so I'm kind of visiting here now I have been out to see Alex we are back together I suppose I'm going on a staycation to Wales just to stay in the home of a family friend which is vacant currently and we will still be social distancing and all of that jazz so it's all very safe. That does mean I don't know whether I'll film next week or not but I'm just really looking forward to a total break and it will be a total break because the other bit of news I have is that at least for now I don't have to do any more job applications. Now I kind of touched on this in my last video but I didn't get the book selling job that I'd applied for at the start of or just before lockdown and I've been applying for jobs for about a year and I think it's kind of only just sunk I, I think it's sunk in now that I'm happy to see this on camera I got a job I am not going to tell you where the job is that would just be irresponsible but it is kind of education technology teaching people how to use tech to improve the education they're delivering and oh I'm so excited and so scared it's going to be working from home to start off with but eventually I will need to move to the the place where this job is based that means in the next month or so 
looking at flats and and thinking about moving you know I've got I'm gonna have a salary. Now one of the things I was worried about with getting a job, especially some of the jobs I was applying for, was the kind of privacy element and the impartiality element. I don't have to be impartial for this job, it does mean I can carry on making YouTube videos. However, I am gonna be working full time and I just don't know how that's gonna work, if that's gonna work. So I don't really know what the future of this channel is at the moment. I would love to, at the very least, carry on doing book videos and the kind of crafting sewing stuff but I just don't know because of fibromyalgia because of everything else that's going on I don't know how much time I'm gonna have which makes me kind of sad but also very excited because I've never had a full-time job um, I've had part-time jobs, I've had summer jobs at university, but I've never worked full-time and I don't know how this is going to work. I really enjoy this as a hobby, I want to carry on with it so hopefully we can make that happen. But yeah, I got a job and the plan is for me and Alex to move in together because he's starting PhD in the same place and I think that's the first time I've said that on camera either like I'm so proud of him and it's just worked out really well and I thought I thought he'd be waiting on me to get a job I didn't know how long this was gonna last but it's it's happened and now I'm waiting on him instead <laughs> he's got a lease to finish up in London and then we'll we'll look at moving but oh, I got a job I got a job I'm no longer unemployed on that front I've got a lot to say about the whole unemployment thing and I'm wondering if you'd like to see a video on that just in terms of personal well-being and persevering with job hunting. I can't believe I got a job given the current situation. I didn't expect it. Job hunting at the moment is like, it's like playing Mario Kart on like the hardest version possible and with wearing a blindfold. Um, it's really tricky. And I would be happy and keen to talk a little bit more about that if you will have me. But for now, I think that's everything. Yeah, I hope to anyone who's still looking for a job there. Gives you a little bit of hope. I think I, like I couldn't believe they'd offered me it. I was like, really? You sure? But I get like that about everything. That's my little update. If you've, if there's anything you've enjoyed in the last month that you think other people might like to hear about, please drop me a comment uh, down below. If there's anything exciting happening in, in your life. I hope you're really well. I hope you're safe. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again. I don't know when. We'll see what the future holds. For this channel but for now thank you and uh, goodbye i hear an ice cream van i can hear the teddy bears picnic that's really weird oh my god mr whippy do i run or do i stay what other favorites do i have do i have any um